My name is Dr. Les Huff, Director of Special Collections at Georgia State University in Atlanta. Uh, I'm privileged to be here with former Secretary of Labor, W.J. Ussery. Our guest here on campus today and tomorrow. Uh, the date is February 24th, 1987, and we are beginning a life history, oral history, of Mr. Ussery. I'm privileged to have also uh, in this interview Ms. Caroline Blumenthal of the library faculty who will be joining uh, Secretary Ussery and myself for uh, parts of this oral history series. Uh, we've outlined to uh, Mr. Ussery the uh, major periods that we've identified in his life beginning with the early years that we'll be discussing today through his career with the International Association of Machinists, uh, the period of his government service, and his uh, more recent work as a labor management relations consultant uh, through Bill Ussery Associates. I'd like to begin the interview by uh, asking you, Mr. Ussery, to uh, give me your earliest recollections, uh, the recollections you have of the your ancestors, perhaps starting on your father's side, the Ussery name, uh, those earliest ancestors, great-grandparents or whatever, either that you had a direct experience with or that you can remember um, your parents or others members of the family talking about. What can you tell me about your father's ancestry? Well, my father, his grandfather, along with his great-uncle, left Virginia with one of the usheries stopping in South Carolina, the other one coming home to Georgia, and settled in a place in south central Georgia on the edge of Wilkerson County and Twiggs County. And my grandfather uh, was born in that area. The, the great grandfather was a farmer. His son was a farmer, which was my grandfather's father, and then subsequently my grandfather was born, and uh, he moved to further up in the Wilson County, and uh, married my grandmother, uh, who was a decent. My grandmother on my father's side also had been living in Wilson County. And they go back into the 17th century, but not much is known about it. Uh, there was a very large family, and in my, and in my father's case, uh, my fa grandfather married a decent, uh, and a decent married his sister. In fact, uh, that was, my father had several uh, double first cousins because the Ushers had married into the Decens, and the Decens married into the Ushers. And uh, so my grandfather was a farmer. Each of them was a farmer, primarily in Wilkeson County. Uh, my grandmother, that I did not ever know myself, but uh, who have been told about her all of my life, she died on, I think it was November the, the 9th, the 10th, and 19, and 18, and she died with the flu. The flu epidemic was going through, and she died of that. My grandmother died thinking my father was going to the war uh, the next day, or going off to the service to go to the war, and my grandfather was going. Draft just did get my father on, the, on my grandfather on the youngest side, and just did get my grandfather uh, on the on the other side. And she died thinking both of us, the father, her son, and her husband, was going to the service. And uh, so I never did know my my uh, my grandfather. My grandfather, of course, later died in 1935. He died in a car wreck. Uh, he had bought him a, uh, he had uh, subsequently remarried, and of course I remember my step-grandmother uh, as a child very much. Uh, 
uh, and then she had passed away, and my grandfather was killed in a car wreck in a Model A Ford in 1935. Uh, and I thought he was an old man. He's younger than I am now, obviously. But uh, but he had been out to see a young lady of about 20-something years old the night that he got killed in his car wreck. So I, in later years, I began to really have a lot of admiration for my grandfather. He was a very nice-looking man. So he died in 1935. And, uh, and my father, after this, grew up on the farm. They were all farmers. And... Uh, he had uh, uh, two sisters, my father did, and uh, four brothers. And uh, my father moved from the farm to, went to work at the state hospital. Uh, and around 1920 or 21, and that's where he met my mother. Uh, my mother <coughs> was born then. Jones County, Georgia, which is uh, uh, and it's between uh, out from a place called Hillsboro, Georgia, and a community that no longer exists. And uh, although I remember her parents extremely well, because they lived to be uh, uh, quite elderly. And my grandmother on my mother's side was a Mercer because the Mercers was, had, was kind of well-to-do people. They were big landowners. Uh, uh, the part of the Mercer family is the one that started Mercer University. So the Mercer name was quite a name from this point. But there were a lot of kids, and they were big landowners. And my grandmother, uh, on my mother's side, uh, had married uh, 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 Roland Williamson. And, and he lived in the, as I say, part of the county close to the Hillsborough, where my grandmother lived down close to a place called Wayside. And they were very poor people, my grandfather was. Uh, my great-grandfather uh, left home one day with, uh, with some slaves uh, and went to take uh, loads of white, uh, cotton to make them to have it ginned. And he never did come back home. He took the money left. He sent the uh, people back home. And my grandfather had been uh, like a, ever since he was about six or seven years old, he had been having to dirt fall and never did have very much from that point. And uh, so uh, they were very poor. And uh, my, grand, my grandmother insisted that she was going to go back home, which was then quite a distance away, but it was about 17, 18 miles away, back to the old Mercer, where the Mercer plantation was at Wayside, where she had, had inherited, I think, around 150 acres of land or something. And my mother told about how they had to build the house and uh, my mother helped uh, my grandfather split shingles to put on the house. My mother and her family was the oldest child, and uh, she had to work both in the field and also uh, help my father with, uh, with uh, several brothers and sisters who were very young. She had two brothers, and she had five sisters. And. Uh, so uh, my mother tried to get as much schooling as she can to the extent that, uh, that she lived, uh, went away a year and lived in a home and tutored and taught some other kids uh, reading and writing and the other person. And then when she came back home, she stayed a, a short time and she went to, left to go also to Milledgeville to go to work at the state hospital. And that's where my father and her met in around 19 and uh, 21. Uh, my father working at the state hospital and my mother working at the state hospital. Uh, my mother used to tell me stories about when she would uh, uh, left home that she didn't want her father to know she was leaving, but her mother knew she was leaving, and her, and her mother uh, would, uh, would uh, catch some chickens and sell some butter and chicken so that she could get train fare and, and a little bit of spending money when she went to Middlesville to go to work. And uh, 
a little bit of money then. I guess my mother, as I remember, she told me she had 85 cents when she when she got to the hospital. And the and when she got there, she uh, on the train. There was a taxi there, and uh, this lady was driving the taxi that my mother used to point out to me when I was a kid. And she took her to the nurse's home and charged her 50 cents. The only thing when my mother looked out the next day, it was no more than 200 yards uh, from that train station to that nurse's home. So I always grew up not quite liking this lady for taking my mother's 50 cents in that early period. And I guess in some ways always kind of taught me about trying to not see that people were mistreated in any way as I grew up. Because it's a story that's kind of stuck with me all those years. So, uh, on my mother's side, uh, as you say, uh, she had uh, five sisters, they all got married. None of them was, uh, 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 achieved uh, a great deal in life, other than just very good citizens in their communities and areas in which they lived. Um, uh, and my, uh, my mother's side, uh, uh, there has been uh, as they have all found, there's a lot of tragedies, but uh, a lot of good things has happened. Uh, I can only go back on my mother's side to my great-great-grandfather, that when my grandfather used to tell about how his father left home and never came back. On my mother's side, she had, uh, she could tell me, my grandmother, who lived to be 90-something, could uh, tell me all about what her um, mother would tell her about the Civil War, the war between the states, and how they had to uh, how they had to uh, bury things, and how they had to hide things to keep from them being taken from them in the war. And and as I say, they were what I refer to as dirt farmers. On my father's side, there was uh, there were some Parkers who are members of the family who. Owned just huge tracts of land, like miles of land, and who uh, my father and uh, my grandfather's told me about where the stagecoach used to stop, and they had uh, 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 stores. A lot of places. I had on my father, this Colonel Parker, uh, had uh, a large number of slaves. He had a very huge farm. Uh, I, I can't remember, but he had uh, something like, a, uh, I don't know, uh, I'd have to maybe get this from my father, something like 15 or 16 kids, all by the same wife. He had three or four sons that went to the war, the war meaning the, uh, the war between the states. Uh, he had one son that get killed in the war. Uh, one son never came back home, he didn't ever know what happened to him. Uh, and I think two came back as he used to. So I, on both of my my grandparents' side, uh, I can remember them telling me a lot about events uh, during the period of the, of the Civil War and the problems encountered from that. Uh, there was to say, neither side of my family was there any in the immediate family was there any real wealth or any great landowners. My grandfather owned a on my grandfather, Usri, owned three or four hundred acres of land, I guess, and my grandmother, as I said a while ago, had about 150 acres of land until she died, and it was off an old tract of land. So I can I can go back to my great-great-grandfathers, but that's about all that I can remember going back to. Okay. Um, Apparently, until your parents' generation, uh, the uh, livelihood of virtually all your ancestors was farming. Was well, farmers. My father, when he was young, he worked at a number of jobs, uh, like a, a well, which uh, but mostly allied with farming. Uh, my father did in his very younger days. He ran a streetcar one year. Uh, he moved to, went to Macon, uh, Georgia, which was a, one of the major cities, and he ran. He drove a streetcar, but then he'd go back home because uh, in planning season, other he was supposed to be back home working. 
uh, and uh, he did work. Uh, my father worked uh, at one time at a at a cotton gin, which was ally, uh, allied with a farming, but basically all of it was farming uh, in one way or the other, and mostly what I call dirt farming. It was not dairy farming or anything else. It was just uh, basically uh, 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 working the ground and the soil. On my uh, on my father's side, it was mostly cotton farming, and you and, uh, and on my uh, on my mother's side, it was uh, it was more corn, wheat, uh, um, cotton being the cash crop on my father's side, uh, corn being the the uh, cash crop on my mother's side, and really they weren't that far apart, but the the lay of the land and the farming areas was quite different. The farming, the soil of the farm on in Wilson County, down where my father lived, was much better than it was in Jones County. <clears throat> my grandparents, when I used to go to see them on my mother's side as a young kid, while they always had food because they always had their own, uh, kill their own hogs and they had chickens and they had a garden and they had and my grandmother would can and make a, and preserve all kinds of uh, various things, apples, peaches, all of anything. <coughs> but I I my son never went there when I was a kid where they ever had any any flour for instance. They always had cornmeal but never could afford flour. And uh, uh, because they never had much cash money to uh, to make anything. A little bit on my father's side, it was a little bit different. There was a little more cash money in the family than that, and I'm not talking about very much money. But for my grandfather, as I said, on my father's side, he, I remember when he had a Model T for it, and then when he bought this Model A Roadster, uh, which was a pretty sporty automobile uh, at the time, and I believe that uh, I believe that he was 61 when he got killed. So, he, where I thought he was an old man then, he was relatively young. Uh, were any of your relatives on either side tenant farmers as such, or did most of them own at least a modest uh, amount of land? Uh, or share or share uh, farmers. Certain or? members of the family later on were tenant farmers and uh, and share croppers with others. But uh, to, well, I'd have to I'd have to say that my my grandfather on my father's side uh, he managed farms for other people, but he both. Uh, most of the time, he, as I understand, he was paid for doing that rather than uh, than sharing the crop or, or, or tenant farmers or anything else of that sort. But there were members of the family, obviously tenant farmers and sharecroppers. <coughs> but in modern uh, language, your father's parents were probably considered more middle class, and maybe your mother's parents somewhat lower middle class or whatever, I, I, that terminology is a much more recent terminology, which I'm sure your grandparents would never have recognized. Well, I, I yes, that's uh, my, my, my father's side uh, had a little bit more than on my mother's side, although my grandmother's family probably had more than, than, than the rest, but uh, in her family, there were six or eight kids who had to share in the inheritance that they had. Uh, my grandmother, being a Mercer, they ra they had peaches in that day, uh, and uh, they had a peach packing shed and a lot of other things, and was fairly well to do. Uh, but but by the time she married my grandfather. My grandfather didn't really have anything, so their life together was, uh, was yes, was somewhat below uh, what uh, would have been on my father's side, but not a great deal, but some difference in that. It was, uh, it was uh, they would be, today, in today's term, uh, they would uh, uh, both be far below uh, uh, middle in any way. Um, what do you feel as if the impact on your life of uh, 
any of these ancestors of yours, let's say, you didn't actually know anyone prior to your grandparents, or meet personally anyone prior to your grandparents, is that correct? That's correct. Your great grandparents. So I guess we'll confine this kind of question to the to your grandparents. And what sort of impact on your life do you feel as if uh, grandparents had? Well, first of all, um, uh, uh, that was uh, uh, honesty and integrity. Uh, certainly, on my uh, on my mother's side, probably even more so than on my father's side. But uh, honesty and integrity, uh, and a genuine love and concern for that country, even though they wasn't sharing it much of it at that time. They sought to be good citizens, uh, and uh, they wanted to be good neighbors, although the neighbors not live the way we do today, to share with each other. Uh, and I guess uh, uh, my life was molded because I wanted to help people who were underprivileged. And I won't jump to, to my uh, point yet. I, wanted to be governor of the state of Georgia. I wanted to get a law degree. I thought you had to be a lawyer to get to, get to be governor. My real ambition would be governor of Georgia. I don't know what for, but I was a primary. I can tell you what for. I'm going around talking about the state hospital and my father before. But uh, that was uh, uh, other than, uh, or there was, when you have a lot of kids, there, there was obviously some problems on both sides, but basically there were there were no serious problems in violation of the law or uh, any of the other things. Uh, my, uh, on my uh, father's side, he had brothers that, uh, that, uh, that uh, well, I say that would be maybe in, more involved with, uh, with alcohol, but on my mother's side, they were, uh, it was, uh, uh, clean. They were church-going people. Uh, I remember my father in the Amen corner in this little Baptist church with a, with a lamp light in it. Uh, he built the church in a wagon because they, they didn't have a few cars. But most of the time, if you had to go with many people, you'd go in the wagon. And, and I remember as a kid going to church with my grandparents in the wagon. Uh, that was on my father's side. My grandfather was uh, very active in the church. Uh, and uh, on my uh, mother's side, my grandfather was not active in, the, in any formalized church, <coughs> but, he, but he as honest as you could find anyone uh, was constantly talking about the Ten Commandments and, uh, and, and, and trying to teach in that whole area. My grandmother was uh, always went to the Primitive Baptist Church, and, and she couldn't go much. My grandfather was living because he said he wouldn't go to church or didn't go to any formal church. But uh, I saw my grandmother baptized in this cold water, I guess, in the Primitive Baptist Church, and she must have been 80 years old then, uh, at this point, because she'd never been baptized. And but but honesty and integrity, I think, hard work. The teachings of them was, was very, very sound, uh, and uh, so it, it, it did have mold your life early on, on both sides. Now, were they? Uh, you mentioned earlier that, that uh, and we'll talk about this in more, a lot more detail later. But this desire for uh, public service and helping the underprivileged. Do you see the roots of that at all in the ancestors like your grandparents or earlier? Were any of them involved in public service in any way? or uh, Not in any formal way, they never were. Um, but um, as I said, I, they, they, were, they were concerned about uh, their country. They were concerned about their neighbor and the welfare of their neighbor. And uh, public service in the sense of working for uh, or, or holding any office, no. The closest to that, because both my father and my mother worked for the for the state, 
but uh, in, in the earlier years, no, I don't know of anyone that was ever very active. What it did teach you, though, as I think from the point that, uh, that, that you have to love your neighbor and the people around you to want to be a good public servant. You have to have some solid foundations upon which to do. And, uh, and, and I think um, that, uh, that well, I know that well, there were a lot of lessons that I learned early in life about uh, uh, in that whole area that helped me as I, as I went on through my own life. You mentioned religion, and we'll also talk more about that later, but uh, do you think some of this desire, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but some of this desire to help the underprivileged might have come out of that religious emphasis or that Oh yeah, and that was moral even more, emphasis? That was even probably more so in my own life, which uh, when we got to get to my own life. My father, uh, my father was... Um, but the, he was, you know, my grandfather was more of a formalized religion and on my father's side than it was on my, grand, on my, on my mother's side. As I say, my fa grandfather was a deacon in the Baptist church. I remember going to the church with him. You had to go to the church. We'd go to, we'd go to what they call protractive meetings then, and later it became uh, revival meetings. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, and uh, you'd have protractive meetings in the summertime because uh, you'd lay by the crops. And uh, then you could uh, take food, and you'd go about three o'clock in the afternoon, and you didn't get well. That's it. About the time the sun went down, you went home. You understand? You went through two preachings and two teachings, and, and, a, and a meal. You know, to, from that point. Uh, and and the same with my father. My father has always been very, very active in his church, in his community. Uh, and uh, my father was a, so he not only was a deacon, but he was a trader in the church for a while, and he's been a little bit of everything. And when I was a kid, uh, well, we went to church on a Sunday morning, Sunday night, went to BYPU, went to prayer meeting on Wednesday night, and cottage prayer meeting on Thursday night, probably. And probably something else if I couldn't figure out how to get out of it one time during the week, if you follow me. And that was, uh, uh, so my father has always been To the less degree on my mother's side, it was a formalized church. So, uh, the, in my own case, the, the well, even in even in my early days, the, the church was the was a social uh, activity you had. Uh, uh, my uh, I've been told that I'm a pretty good public speaker. Most of that started within the church, BYPU, and the other things, parts and, and churches you get, and the other things. But, uh, much training in that whole area as I, as I got in formal school in the early days. Um, and to, uh, the church was a, uh, was a, was a, uh, a wonderful place to, to get a broaden your education, not only in, not only in, in uh, about the Bible and about God, but you associated with other people and you just learned a lot by going to church and in association with other people. And my father always thought that. Caroline, I know you have to leave shortly. Are there, is there a question, a follow-up question you might want to direct? Uh, well, I was going. I was wondering too about the extent of your own, well, of your family's involvement in the church, and and how if they practiced any leadership roles in it in particular. My family, mm -hmm. my own family, yes. Uh, uh, well, as I said, from the time I can remember. Uh, we went to church regular, uh, and at least once a month the preacher come have dinner with us. And, uh, and uh, our whole, basically our whole life, uh, their life was centered around working and going to church, because the church was a social life at that point. Uh, and uh, all of those years, uh, until I went into service, uh, I went to church absolutely regular. And of course, later on in my own life, there was a period of time. My father taught a men's Bible class and was very active in the church myself. How do you think that, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, how do you think that regular church attendance and so on, how did it affect their lives outside of church service? You mentioned honesty and the moral emphasis. Um, uh, that 
I guess you've mentioned several times his concern for the less fortunate. Do you see that as also uh, being an emphasis that grew out of moral and religious training? Or oh, yeah, well, not? that's an illustration, you know, because this was, uh, I grew up uh, at the, uh, well, I don't remember too much about it, I grew up in the, in the, in the Depression period. My father worked in the state, and most of my life, my mother worked. And between my mother and my father, and I only had one sister. Uh, well, we we can I can truthfully say that we were in probably the middle class, a little bit better. So much we might have been a little bit better because just two kids with both parents working. Uh, but we were constantly. Uh, there used to be a, a Baptist orphan's home right here in Hapeville. I don't know how many times I come with my parents that we would bring food. Uh, and we didn't have any money much, but you would get canned fruit and, and anything else you'd get from the garden that you could can or anything, and sometimes some money to help others. It wasn't constantly any time that when I was growing up during that period that we wasn't collecting something for somebody else and sharing with somebody else. Now, that was before we got all carried away about poverty and all the other things, because most everybody was in poverty, and nobody lived had much better than others in Ascension, and a few people around had an automobile, uh, and a few people had telephones. But the whole thing was is to, as it, 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 it taught you to want to assist and help others. Uh, and uh, it, 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 it whether that was in sickness or whether that was in, in hard times. Uh, and uh, my mother was a, was a nurse, uh, and my mother was, uh, even when she wasn't work, because we didn't have, people didn't go to hospitals a lot, even when I was a kid, so you had somebody had to nurse them when they very sick, you understand? Like that. So my parents and my, and my whole life then was helping others. More so than I think in, in a lot of families. Uh, and, uh, it, uh, it, uh, well, I didn't know it was hard then. I thought that's what you're supposed to do, you understand? And I didn't know that, uh, that people had a lot more. Uh, it, it was a very difficult period in the early 30s. Uh, it was doing a very difficult period. Mm -hmm. We'll excuse Carolyn. We'll see. see we'll continue. Nice trip. Very good. Thank you. Good. Um, could you physically describe uh, some of these people about which you've been talking? Uh, what about your grandfather on your father's side? Uh, your grandfather Usery. What kind of a man was he? My grandfather on my, and on my father's side was a very nice looking man that uh, uh, that was very well built proportionally, not a big man. Uh, he was a very kind person, as I remember him. Um, he loved to dress nice. Uh, he loved to mix with people. Um, and uh, uh, he was, uh, he, he uh, why, he, again, he didn't make a lot of money at farming. Uh, I think he was a pretty good manager of the things that he did have at that point. He was, a, uh, he was respected, uh, highly respected, as I said. Uh, uh, had uh, some sons, my father's uh, brothers and some uncles. Who, who, while I think they were good people, uh, would uh, uh, some of the one of the sons uh, he indulged more than the than some of the rest in the family. Uh, but generally, they all were pretty good uh, people. I was maybe as good as my grandfather was at that point. Uh, I don't know of any on my father's side, and maybe there was then. Generally, that that is ever. <laughs> had to go to prison or anything or anything from that point. Uh, so drink more than others, he said, which was probably one of the biggest sins uh, uh, at that time. Uh, and uh, my, uh, 
was uh, again well, on my mother's side. There was uh, my grandfather on, on my my mother's side. Hardly ever went any place. He stayed home. He thought the place was at home. He didn't go to churches like that. Uh, he wasn't as he wasn't as known as my grandfather Hussey was known. Uh, he was a different personality. Uh, he was um, uh, had a much uh, uh, he had a, uh, a strong temper. Uh, and now I think trying to understand my father from the way his father left him. Uh, at some time, looking back, I think my grandfather was was uh, was uh, could be bitter about certain things, while at the same time, he, people had helped him, and he must help other people. It was almost like a different motivation, a drive for him versus my other my other grandfather. My father. Um, and uh, yeah, probably on my uh, well, I can't say that one. I'm trying to remember, one worked any harder than the other. My grandfather on my mother's side, I remember much longer because he lived on until about, I think it was 47 or 48, where my my grandfather Usri died in a, in a car wreck at 35, I mean 1935. So I knew my pa grandparents on my mother's side much longer. I never knew, even knew my grandmother on my, on my father's side because she died, uh, as I said, in 1918. Uh, I knew my step-grandmother step who, uh, was a very wonderful lady and had two kids by a former husband. Uh, I used to hear my mother say and, uh, and, and, and could observe some of myself, but mother, what my mother would say that my step-grandmother was mistreated by members of the family because they were not her mother, uh, that sort of thing. But she, she was a she was one of the best cooks that I could ever remember. She was a very fine uh, housekeeper and, uh, and so forth. Uh, and again, on my, my grandmother on my mother's side was not a very good housekeeper, not a very good cook, uh, but uh, she uh, constantly made, was making quilts or, 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 or other things to make life better. Sense and worked hard all the time. Uh, I imagine my grandmother on my on my mother's side. Uh, she probably made 250 quilts during her lifetime, uh, and she would come to your home or anything and beg for scraps or anything else to make quilts with. And she was very artistic in in that fashion of making beautiful quilts. Uh, and. Uh, she had no qualms about peddling butter or eggs or anything else that she could to, to, to make any money. Okay, um, you mentioned earlier, I want to clarify this, uh, the educational background of, I believe you were talking at the time, your parents. Can you, going back just a bit further, what about your grandparents? Uh, of course, public schools at the time, probably your grandparents were uh, growing up public schools were only really getting started in parts of Georgia. Uh, yeah, my grandparents, to my knowledge, well, first of all, uh, on my father's side, my grandfather, was the only one I can remember, he could read and write, and he was a pretty good businessman. Uh, if he had any formal education, it was very, very limited. My father, went to school through what would they, they be about the seventh or eighth grade, I guess, which in those times was a pretty good education. He went to a one one room schoolhouse. In fact, he had told me about where the schoolhouse was and, uh, and how his uh, mother had insisted that he go to school and his father. Uh, and uh, uh, it wasn't very many kids in the, in the school. And of course, uh, being a one-room schoolhouse, it was, uh, it was, I don't know how you decided between the grades, but uh, uh, different uh, things were taught by the teacher. On, <clears throat> on my mother's side, uh, why my grandfather could count money, uh, he could not really read and write, very limited he could read and write. 
my grandmother could not read and write, but she could take care of herself with money pretty well, and even that, she probably could be cheated about her money and anything with, with that. They had no formal education at all on my, on, my, on my grandmother's side. I don't know whether my grandfather, I doubt that my grandfather ever had a chance to go to any school. Uh, if it was, it was very, very limited. Uh, and, and that was basically true with my grandmother, too, on my mother's side. In fact, to, uh, I remember uh, on many occasions having helped my grandmother with something and uh, she would ask me about, uh, or maybe I'll read something to her. She couldn't read uh, anything. That is, it would be very limited if she could read anything. Um, following up on that, did they see themselves, let's say your grandparents on both sides, did they see themselves as very similar to? or very different from each other? In other words, what what were the differences between the two families? You've already referred I don't know so. that. I don't know that my grandparents on my mother's side ever met the grandparents on my father's side. In fact, I'm sure they did not. <coughs> I can't ever recall any occasion. I'm never hearing of any occasion that they ever met. So, um, I think I would be, be uh, I think that would be uh, a correct statement. That they, I doubt that they ever met each other, even though it wasn't that great a distance. They lived about uh, 50 or 60 miles apart, 50 miles apart probably, uh, and uh, which was that in that day was was quite a quite distances for them to go, especially when they didn't have uh, much money or anything. Uh, so they never met. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, they were probably, I'm sure that they were, my mother had sisters that met my father and my brothers met later on, but, uh, and my father met, the, 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 but, uh, but my grandparents never met each other. How would they have seen themselves vis-a-vis -vis their neighbors? Were they uh, better, or we talked about the relative uh, deprivation of your mother's family as compared to your father's, but how did the two families compare to the neighbors around them as, as either they saw it or as you uh, saw it uh, looking back, or you see it looking well, back? Well, I think my, I think my, on my, on my grandfather's side, on my father's side, uh, um, they would have seen themselves as about average, uh, certainly not anything above average. Uh, maybe in some cases a, 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 a about average, I would say. There were certain people that had around where my grandfather and I were talk about who had better homes. Uh, there was a doctor who had a better home. There were some people who had better. But overall, I would say about average. There were some below and some above. Uh, on my mother's side, uh, the, the whole economic status of the people around them, they would be somewhat below average. Uh, and, uh, and because they had less resources, uh, less chances to, to, to gain any resources, uh, and all of this was uh, pretty much held through up until, including, uh, well I say including, up till World War II. World War II changed the economics throughout, changed lifestyles. People went to work in public uh, places and a lot of other things. Now, uh, in the in the uh, in the middle 30s or late 30s, starting with the middle 30s and late 30s, uh, certain actions were taken by the federal government, or primarily uh, President Roosevelt, that enhanced uh, the lives of uh, both of uh, my uh, family. Uh, uh, my grandmother, on my mother's side, worked in a cannon plant, uh, canning peaches and, and uh, peppers and other things, but most of this started right about World War II and just a little bit before that. Uh, in fact, my grandfather's interesting story, my mother's side, he detested uh, my uh, grandmother and, and 
one of my uncles and I think a couple of my sisters who work in a cannon plant and then they could draw unemployment compensation and my grandfather resented that. He called it rocket ship money. You don't take any money that you don't work for. If you don't work for money, you, uh, you don't get it. Uh, and he couldn't understand and since he had never been able to achieve that, I don't think that, my, well I know that my my grandfather on my father's side never worked for anybody a day unless it was cut wood for somebody or something else and fly a field for him or something. Uh, that's not true with my grandfather on my father's side. He did do, he did uh, from time to time work at, uh, for other people. We are now resuming uh, our interview with Secretary Ussery. Uh, of course, I'm Les Huff and uh, we are still on the afternoon of the 24th of February here at Georgia State University. I want to talk just a bit more about your grandparents' generation or early, uh, or our memories of conversations about earlier generations and talk about some of the same issues that we'll later cover with your immediate family, your parents and so on. Um, we've already talked about religion um, and I won't explore that except as it comes up um, in the discussion. But I did want to talk about some, some aspects of the communities in which they lived. Again, some of these issues we've already talked about, like religion, others not. Um, what uh, individuals in the communities, let's take your, your father's uh, parents, what, um, what individuals in the, in the communities where they uh, lived, did they look up to or uh, see as leaders uh, in their communities? Do you have any notion as to I don't who know. would they have respected uh, most or um, if not in their local communities, in, in the broader um, society? Who were their heroes or do you have any idea? I don't know that I have any real ideas. I think we would uh, first on my, on my uh, father's side, on my grandfather Usri, uh, while he lived, they lived in rural and they lived in the country, it was a little more of a settlement of people uh, within walking distance, uh, half a mile or a mile from where they lived. It was, it was fairly thickly settled, uh, even though it wasn't anybody like next door. They removed. In my mother's side, they were even more in the country or rural than they were. And it was no village or no community. It was about three miles from my uh, where my mother's people lived to the store and to the railroad station. Uh, and uh, so they both lived in what would be very rural areas. Uh, they, uh, they uh, both, because uh, there were, as I remember, my grand, both of my grandparents early, there was obviously no electric lights, there were no running water in the house, uh, in my, in my grandmother's, uh, on my, on my mother's side, there was even no whale. They went to about a, uh, uh, a quarter of a mile to the spring to get water. In fact, uh, I remember when I, when we used to go, my grandmother would send me to the spring box to get the milk from the spring box or the butter during the summertime. And the spring box was like a, like what uh, you would call a little bit of refrigeration. It was a box made where the cool spring water would run over the box to keep it cool from that point. Uh, they, uh, they both, uh, churned their own milk, made their own butter, uh, and uh, so they were both living fairly rural communities. That was and where they got, uh, on my, again on my grandfather, on my father's side, uh, they would get the, the, the market bulletin or the farmer's bulletin or the almanac and some other things they would read, and they would read the Bible. Uh, 
uh, they, they didn't have much way to communicate with the outside anyway. And that was even true again on my, on my mother's side uh, because my, my grandfather on my mother's side couldn't read and write. My grandmother couldn't read any newspaper at that point. Again, uh, they, uh, later years, they began, of course, to have a radio. But in the early days, as I remember, they didn't, they, they didn't have any radio or anything. So who do they kind of look to? On my, on my, on my grandfather Usri, on my father's side, I remember going to him to a little place called McIntyre, which was about four miles away. Uh, and that was where they, uh, they, 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 during that time, the railroads, the trains would come through there, four or five passenger trains a day, and three or four freight trains, and it was a community. Uh, and he had uh, some relatives who was kind of, uh, I won't say well-to-do, well-to-do relatively speaking, like they run stores and a, and a, and a, and a gin and some other things in this whole area. Uh, I guess uh, uh, the biggest name that was on my father's side was Congressman Carl Vinson, who was the congressman, and he would come through because he was the congressman for nearly 48 years, I think it was 48 years. Uh, in fact, I remember him telling me about he ran for office uh, when only white males that owned land could vote, uh, and that had paid poll tax, and then he ran when uh, when, uh, when women got the right to vote, and then he ran when blacks got the right to vote. So he, but, but on my grandfather, Usry side, they, were, they knew him, and he'd come to their home and that sort of thing. Uh, on, my, on the Williamson side, my mother, I don't really remember anybody, per se, that, uh, uh, my, again, uh, on my grandfather, Usry side, the pastor would come to church, uh, people would come and visit. And it was, a, and they were more involved in a little what, which wasn't great social things of that day, but they were more involved socially than on my mother's side, and, and, and until World War Two, or the, I should say World War Two, until the period of so the 1940s, late 1930s and 40s. Um. I've listed the topic of community celebrations or community activities. Um, my impression from what you've just said is they did not tend to be heavily, uh, uh, especially your, your mother's family did not tend to be heavily involved in those. Of course, they also did not live right in a, uh, an immediate community. Is that correct? That's right. On my, on my mother's side, uh, they would go visit relatives. And the relatives would live within a few miles around and see them. And occasionally relatives would come to, to see them. But on my, on my mother's uh, side, I don't remember any great exchange of, of, of people coming or sharing meals or that sort of thing. Uh, they were just a family that kind of lived unto themselves and worked every day uh, in the fields. Uh, and as I said, it really had very little. Mm. My, fa my father's side, that would be more of a social and a change and, and people visiting a little bit more but not to a great extent. Uh, you also mentioned quilt making, I believe on your grandmother's side, on, on my, your mother's on side? Mother's, mother's, mother's side, my grandmother. She was very artistic in quilting uh, and she has made some of the most beautiful quilts. In fact, um, when uh, I, I gave the present Secretary of State a quilt made by my grandmother before she died, and Ms. Schultz still tells about how beautiful it is and how artistic it was, uh, and she loved to do that. She had quilting frames in her, uh, well, <clears throat> the fireplace was in, in her bedroom. That was the biggest room in the house, and my grandfather's in her bedroom. And, and they had uh, uh, little pulleys, and you pull the quilting frames up into the up into the ceiling every day and then uh, every night and during the day you'd let them down and of course it would be over the bed and my mother would use those, my grandmother would use those quilting frames all around. My grandmother's, uh, uh, my mother's mother, my grandmother on my mother's side, uh, most of the time during the winter months would cook on the fireplace. I know I've watched my grandmother cook uh, uh, with the was they had these uh, hooks that came down out of the chimney that you hang the pots on, uh, 
uh, heated water and, uh, and, and made soup and cooked beans or uh, anything else that was, that was cooking, a cook a stew or anything else over the fire. Uh, but uh, she could do that and still work on her quilting. My grandfather would, I can remember uh, him getting all over with grandmother all the time about these damn quilting frames being in the way all the time. Uh, every time he wanted to come in the, the bedroom, because they didn't have anything like a, we would have today. It's a living room, a sitting room, or anything else. So they, 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 the home was not very big, and it was a, a bedroom for the for, grandmother and grandfather, it was a bedroom for the boys and it was a bedroom for the girls uh, on, my, on that side. Uh, my mother's side, even though my mother was the oldest and and I, and she had younger brothers and sisters, she had a, a, a sister, or has a sister, uh, that I have an aunt today that's just a about four or five years older than I am, so I was closer in the sense, and I had an uncle that uh, that was killed. Uh, he was only seven or eight years older than I was, or nine. Uh, and and when I used to go to my grandmother's place for my mother, uh, there was only three sisters that had left home. Everybody else was at home, so I went to see my grandmother, and I would see my sisters and my uncles because they were still living there. That was not true on my father's side. My, fa my father was the third or fourth in the family. All of that family was grown grown and gone away, as, as long as I can remember. There was nobody living at home. Uh, I think at one time, for a short period of time, my father's baby brother was still living at home, but he was a grown man then, so, or came back home for a little while from that point. So I'd go to see them, my, my, my grandfather Ushery and my step-grandmother, it would just be him and her versus whoever was visiting there or uh, somebody came back home. But as a kid, I'd go to, to Grandma Williamson, which is my mother's people, and everybody would be there probably because they still lived at home. Uh, and it was nearly up to the 40s before, before they all began to leave home. Even though I think that my grandfather Williamson I'm sure he was older than my grandfather, Usri. He was quite old, and uh, I say he was, uh, he, I don't know how, what age he was, but he was, he had, he was uh, certainly a grown man, maybe in his late 20s, when he married my grandmother. We've, uh, we've referred to this, but what, what did the houses that, let's say, your grandparents lived in, what did they actually look like? We'll talk about the houses, the house or well, houses I that you grew up the in. The house that my, that my grandparents lived in that I remember, my mother has told me about where she lived when they was a little girl, further further into the country, up in, instead of around Hillsborough. It was a, uh, my grandparents lived in a, in, a, in a house that had two major rooms. Uh, with a hall down the middle. Uh, the hall, as what I remember, was even open on each end. So it was, uh, it was uh, uh, later on, years later, it was closed. And, and on each, on that, on the back of the house then, there were two rooms that was smaller rooms that was just kind of uh, on to the house. So you had a, a major two rooms and two more rooms. Then there was like a uh, an attic or upstairs, uh, which didn't have steps, but you could. It was more like a ladder that you climbed up to that uh, that they used in some ways. But basically, it was a four-room house. Uh, the, the the it was a fireplace on each end of those uh, of the house, uh, and. Uh, my, uh, on the back side of that house, there was no windows, there were shutters, and you open and close the shutters uh, at night and day. Uh, <coughs> there were no screens in my grandmother's uh, house, and certainly uh, people say they have air conditioning. Air conditioning didn't have any screens, you understand, at this point. So you had a problem with, uh, with mosquitoes in the summertime. <coughs> 
a lot of the bugs and insects because they went to bed rather early. Uh, you didn't, and you had lamp light. <coughs> and it, in fact, uh, it, there was no ceiling. Uh, there was no wall board inside of the house. You couldn't. It was weatherboarded on the outside. And I remember sitting in my grandmother's house and you were looking out and you could see outside also. Oh, there was enough cracks in the floor that you could see under the house. I, I asked myself not many times now, how did people stay warm then? But uh, they managed to do that with a big rip roaring fire all the time. And it burned wood in a big, big open fireplace. And as I say, my grandmother cooked on it a lot of time. <coughs> Again, on my, uh, my grandfather, Ushery's side, the house was a little bit better, but not much better. It had uh, one, two, three, uh, four, five rooms, or six rooms, I guess, maybe, uh, and was a little different design and was laid out a little bit better. But there again, I only think two other rooms actually had a wall board or, or inside. And, But it was more usable, and where both uh, both grandparents had wood stoves. Uh, my grandmother Ushery, she cooked on the wood stove all the time. I don't ever remember her cooking much on the on the, on the fireplace or anything, because again, the house was laid out differently from that point. Uh, there was a well right outside of the back door of my grandfather Ushery's home, where I said you had to go to the spring for a long time. It was again in the late thirties or. Sure, in late thirties before they had a well at uh, at uh, my uh, my grandmother on my mother's side. Later, of course, they put a pump in the in the well. And, uh, oh, I don't imagine they had a bathroom inside of the, the house uh, until 1945, 46. That's all that place. Uh, and uh, on my uh, Grandfather Ushery's side, um, I don't know that there was ever a bathroom in his house because, again, he died in 1935. My grandma step had already died before then, and so they never had to do that. Uh, and it was uh, out in the back, you had uh, you had the barns, and because uh, the, uh, the both the cow barns as well as where you would keep the mules or horses for for farm work. And uh, you would have a, a smokehouse. Both of them had a smokehouse where you'd smoke the meat and preserve the, uh, uh, the, the meat that they had. Uh, and but it was I, I would have to say to you, it was it was very poor living considered. But at that time, uh, uh, there were many people that that were that way in the rural areas of the. You would find a few in the in the villages or communities. You would find a few nice homes, well painted and so forth. Uh, I don't think either one of my grandparents' home was ever painted, uh, inside or out. I can't ever remember this, this, that that happening. Uh, I don't know that anybody thought that much about it, to be honest with you. But it wasn't painted. Uh, yeah, either. Uh, yet it was. Uh, uh, it was it was clean. Uh, it was uh, uh, it was uh, they'd have uh, uh, on the beds they had uh, homemade mattresses. Uh, I've already said about my my grandmother on my mother's side with quilts. Uh, well, let me follow up on that, uh, and that's in the area of sort of local custom or culture. Is there anything else about, uh, and, and culture can involve everything from diet to handicrafts such as quilting or um, music, uh, uh, any sort of local custom or culture uh, that, that you, either your grandparents or others in earlier generations were involved in that would be distinctive to that part of the South or that part of Georgia or to your family? No, I can't think of any really. On my uh, my grandfather Ushery, there was an organ in his uh, in his home, and 
my, uh, as I recall, my step-grandmother played it a little bit. There was no real musicians on either side of the family. There was no musical instruments at all on my, on my mother's side. Uh, obviously, uh, that, uh, that, that um, people would sing together and uh, uh, you, you would sing to entertain yourself and as well as a lot of other things. Well, religious or secular? Both. Uh, both. Primarily religious, but uh, there may be a, a, a bit more because very few people, again, had, uh, had, well, they might have a little bit of music, but there was no radio and there was no records. I remember that when they finally did get on my, uh, they were, they, uh, well, I can remember now, I guess, on both sides, uh, where you had a wind-up Victrola, a record player, what was that time? I can remember hearing them run down, you understand, you have to go and wind it up again and buy a few records from that point. Uh, this must have been in the, in the early 30s, I guess, middle 30s from that point. Um, I've already said on my, on my father's side, there was uh, my grandfather always had an automobile, as long as I can remember. Uh, my grandfather on my mother's side, he didn't, he didn't have an automobile. There never was any automobile on that side until my uncle Scott one. Uh, I can see him uh, now hook up with my my uh, my grandmother Williamson. I can see him now my grandfather hooking up the horse to this buckboard that she had, and uh, she would go off someplace whatever she was doing on uh, that buckboard. Because. Uh, I don't know. I took my grandfather Williamson shortly after World War II up to Atlanta, and I think that was because that was the first time he had ever been. He never he'd been over to Milledgeville and maybe out of the county a couple of times. I don't know that he'd ever been out of the state or any place. He had never traveled. Uh, he never had any money to travel. Never wanted to travel. That was not uh, his cup of tea. That was a little bit different on my on my on my father's side again. They had. The trains ran through uh, a lot of trains, so they were pretty close to a main line of that. And he had traveled a little bit and went around some and had his own car. Uh, but uh, neither one of them had ever traveled very much. Uh, I don't I don't think that my grandfather Ushery had ever been out of Georgia, for instance, again. He had never traveled that far away, maybe two or three counties. Uh, Atlanta, because being the major city and the capital and all. I don't know that I don't know that my grandfather Usry ever was ever in Atlanta for that much. He was in Macon a couple of times, but I don't know whether he was ever in Macon several times I guess, but I don't think he was ever in Atlanta. Atlanta was uh, some far off place in a sense in those days. When did you first come here? That's jumping ahead of the story, but uh, well I came to Atlanta the uh, I came to Atlanta with, the first time I came to Atlanta was, we came quite frequently because we would bring food to the orphan's home. Uh, in, um, uh, in 19, and I guess it was 1935 or 36. So that was the occasion for your first visit to Atlanta? Yeah. And then we had, uh, they were building some, some buildings, the new buildings at the state hospital, and, and, and we rented out a room to, to construction workers one time and they had a nice place in Atlanta and we came to visit them well, one time in the, in the middle 30s. But the first time I ever came to Atlanta was my mother and another lady in a 1933 Plymouth to bring a load of, of uh, things to uh, Hapeville. And it's right out almost where the airport was. In fact, I imagine the airport now is on part of the Atlanta airport, on part of the land that the, mm -hmm. the Georgia Baptist Orphan's Zone had at that time. Fascinating. We're going to have to wind up shortly, but I did want to, uh, just completing the uh, list here uh, under social life, uh, what about politics? Uh, uh, the consensus, of course, in Georgia at that time was democratic, as it to a certain extent continues to be, at least in local and state elections. Um, were your were, were your uh, family and the generation of your grandparents on either side particularly active 
in any way or did they differ in any way from the, the community consensus um, in terms of politics? Not to my knowledge. I mean, I don't know of any strong feelings. Uh, there was always strong feelings about uh, on, on my grand my grandmother Williams was more than anybody ever know my mother's mother uh, because uh, and they had suffered as a result directly more directly uh, from the Civil War and uh, they they blamed it on Lincoln and uh, on the Republicans and therefore they were died in the war of Democrats because of the persecution of what they uh, they thought was brought upon them by uh, what, what what was brought on as a result of the of the Civil War. Uh, on my grandfather Ustry's side again, my father's side, uh, uh, I don't know that uh, that uh, that again there was any strong feeling. He was a little involved. A little more, I would say, in politics and voting and doing that sort of thing and being sure than, than on, my, uh, on, on my other grandparents. Uh, I can't even, I don't know, but uh, I don't, I'm not even sure that my grandparents on my mother's side ever even voted. I, I don't know that because during that period of time you had to pay poll tax and you had to do all the other things. So I don't know whether they ever did or not, to be honest with you. My grandmother might have in later years, you know, after the kids got it to go vote and that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, uh, there were a lot of restrictions on voting in the early days. Uh, uh, so. Well, you mentioned property qualifications, yeah. uh, for example. Yeah. Property? Be sure and the poll tax was paid, the other thing. And of course, women didn't, couldn't vote for a long time anyway. Until 1920, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, but uh, I don't know of any, any standout provisions. So there were more. Uh, my grandmother would spend hours talking to me on my mother's side about the Yankees. Uh, and, but on the other hand, I never heard very much about, uh, uh, I never heard uh, very little uh, of what I would call real racist in my family on either side. Uh, I don't know of anybody ever born to the Ku Klux Klan or involved in anything from that side. Uh, there was no strong anti from that point. Uh, they, of course, uh, the, the customs was that you had black and white meeting places in sure. schools and other sure. things, and, they had, and, that, and, and, the, and that had become a part of life for them. But uh, I don't know of any hatred. I don't know of any uh, of anything. Uh, now, interesting, uh, not many blacks even live close to where my grandparents live. Now, I grew up with a with around a lot of blacks at that point. But even even my grandmother, she, uh, did I say on Grandmother Williamson on my mother's side, even though she was always talking about them damn Yankees, and, uh, and I mean, she'd say it with a straight face. And if, it was, was all one word, right? It was all one word. <laughs> In fact, I think she thought they went together. Uh, but uh, I never heard, where well, she'd say damn Yankees, I never heard her say damn black person or, or anything else on that right. one. I never heard from that one. So uh, from that point, I kind of, uh, I, uh, uh, looking back on them, I, I admire both of them because uh, people, uh, you know, I, I, when I was a kid, I'd say the Cuba Clubs playing meat, uh, and I was uh, now obviously quite happy that my parents was, uh, or grandparents or anybody else was never really involved with it. I never really had, to my knowledge, any uncles anybody was involved in, uh, in that process. Uh, and where they, um, I tell you that they had a pretty good philosophy. And my, uh, my 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 mother's parents especially was that it didn't matter to them in particular whether you were black or white, you were neighbors, you was individuals, and and as they customs wouldn't allow you to do certain things. But they, I, I can see them helping a black person today as much as they would a white person at the time they were, or vice versa. You know. 
wasn't it wasn't what I hear today uh, and um, it was, uh, and I've, I've thought about this a lot you know, uh, my uh, my grandparents either one um, forever uh, I have been a a member of the Masonic organization for many years. Uh, I don't know that, uh, that any of my grandparents belong to any fraternal organizations or anything else like that. Uh, in fact, they were not really joiners in the sense. Uh, uh, again, as I, uh, my grandfather on my father's side lived a little more in the world. I said before he had a nice car. He, uh, he, as I said, he was going with a young lady when uh, he got killed. And he was nice looking. He liked to dress nice. He had nice clothes. Oh, uh, 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 there's been very few times that I've ever seen my grandfather with him. So my mother, even in a suit of clothes, I don't know what he ever had a suit of clothes. Because, uh, he had a coat, obviously, uh, and a tie, uh, but. Uh, he probably not had over one shirt or two of his life. They just didn't have much. Um, in fact, uh, the beginnings from my point was, 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 was very poor on both sides. Well, we're at a close for this evening. I'll really want to start in the morning with this issue of change over your earliest recollections uh, in many of these respects, like race relations and other issues that I know you've been involved in in a major way during your lifetime in uh, seeing change come about, both in the South and in other parts of the country. So I'd like to express my thanks for today's efforts, and we'll begin again in the morning. All right, very good.